This video is for you, Mr. Martin. I took your advice and I kind of ran with it. This is a theory video based off of both book and show clues. This video may contain spoilers for those who are not up to date with the show and books. Hi, I'm Raylene and welcome to Khaleesi's Clues. Today's video is going to be about season eight. Are we going to see some new dragons? I believe we are. And I don't mean just the Targaryen dragons. I mean, we're gonna get a new, really big, big dragon. So shall we begin? Okay, so this basically picks up from my last video of um, the Mirror Mazdur Prophecy. This kind of ties in with that one. So if you haven't watched that video, please check that one out um, because this one ties in with that. Anyway, so my original thought about um, Rego and the fact that I believe that he is alive. Um, and my first thoughts of you know, where Rego could have possibly been taken to. Um, just from watching the show and then um, reading the books, I had originally thought that he was taken to a shy because um, right before Danny is knocked to the ground, which triggers her labor, um, Jora has mentioned to her, you know, let's, we could go to, go to a shy, you know, we could travel away, you know, Khal Drogo was dying. And um, if, you know, if you were to go into labor, um, they would rip the baby from your breast and feed it to the dogs. Um, and that, you know, they could travel and go to a shy. So I, that was my first original thought. Um, plus there was the, the fall vision from Bran um, when he was falling and um, he had seen dragons stirring in a shy. So that line always stood out to me. I always was like, oh wow, dragons stirring in a shy. Could that be more dragons? Could that be a vision from the past when dragons were in the shy? Um, which of course with this book and this story, it could be anything. There, it could be multiple things. It could be, as I think, I think a lot of the things that we see and the clues and the um, hints that they give, I think can go in so many different ways. Um, and I think he does that on purpose. Darn you, George, how do you do that? But um, to drive us crazy. So, um, and it works. But <laughs> um, yeah, I, that that line always stood out to me, dragon stirring in a shy. Um, and I know a lot of people say that it, it's seeing the birth of the dragons that Danny hatched um, because of the fact that they are um, towards the shy. And I could see that. I, I could agree with that. You know, I could I could go with that. But it's not a shy. You know, so there is still a chance that it could be something different too. You know, and like I said, it could have multiple meanings. Um, so my like I said, the first original thought I thought, okay, a shy, and then seasons came and gone and I thought okay well they're not bringing Rago into the storyline um and then this last season season seven uh Melisandre was off to Volantis and that made like a light bulb go off in my head so I was like hmm Volantis so let me refresh my memory about Volantis what was going on in Volantis and that's when I read about the uh, the biggest temple, the Rohalor temple, red temple there, um, and that they have the um, largest or the large army, the fiery hand. Um, and which always seems a little strange to me. It's like, why does a temple need its own army? You know, unless they're guarding somebody or something. And I thought, well, you know, could there be a dragon there? And I'm thinking, no, I don't think so. I don't think they could hide it that way. I mean, they could, maybe they could. Um, I mean, it's George's story. He can do whatever he wants. He can hide it under a table if he wants, um, it's whatever he wants to do. Um, but so anyways, I was thinking, okay, well, you know, it's cool. You know, maybe, you know, maybe the Rohalor people, maybe they'll have a dragon egg and maybe, you know, since they had Dra Rago at the time he was born, um, maybe they'll put a dragon egg in his crib and eventually he'll be able to hatch that egg. And then, you know, they'd be able to raise the dragon in the wild and you know have it grow and by the time Rago comes back into the story he'll have a dragon near the size of uh, Drogon possibly and I thought oh you know that's really cool and then you know like as the time went on I was like okay well he's probably not going to have that because how could you really keep a dragon hidden from all these people and you know if it's getting big 
then more people are going to talk. So I thought, okay, well, you know, he's going to come back in the story with his own army, you know, the fiery hand. So I thought that's still cool, but not as cool as riding into the story with a dragon. And, you know, and the thought kind of thought, gosh, you know, how could I think of something cooler than George think of? I mean, there's just, how is that possible? You know, so, but I kind of went with it and everything. And um, it, it still stuck with me though. And I, I kept, you know, you just get a feeling and you start dwelling on something and you start researching and reading a little bit more and things start like um, popping out at you. And um, the fact that uh, hold on one second. The fact that Rego um, is a contender for the prince that was promised. Um, the fact that he was born amidst the smoke and the salt, and he's from the correct bloodline. Uh, the comet was in the um, sky for the bleeding star. Um, and, you know, so I started thinking about it, and I was like, gosh, I think I, think I remember um, a statement like back in the books that I read where it said the prince that was promised will bring a morning that would never end or a dawn that would never end. And so I started like reading back for that and um, I can never find it. I still can't find it, but I would have to like go back and read every book or if anybody knows of that quote out there, great, please, you know, make a comment and let me know because it drove me crazy for a long time. Um, but I did find a quote from Melisandre and she had said the prince that was promised that only the prince that was promised will bring the dawn. And I thought that was an interesting statement. So, you know, me and I love to Google. So <laughs> I'm Googling late at night and um, I Googled the word dawn um, researching and um, came up with like, I think it came up with a definition of dawn. And, and one of the words that was synonymous with dawn was um, light and uh, the word morning was in there. So I kind of started playing with the the statement that Melisandre had said, um, kind of like Mir Miramaz Dur does. She plays on words. George, I think, is the biggest Miramaz Dur. I think he likes to play on a lot of words. I think he likes to mess with us. And um, and, and I mean that in a, in a good way because George, I think, is amazing. I think he's just amazing, but um, makes my mind go berserk this story so uh, I started researching and um, the fact that the morning um, word stood out to me and so um, give me one moment okay sorry I'm back um, I have four children so I'm trying to tape and listen to the background what's going on and sometimes I, if I hear noises I have to stop the taping and go tend to my children and or find out that make sure they're not killing each other <laughs> so and then I lose my train of thought so then I got to come back to this and get my train of thought back so but back to the story so previously I was talking about the word morning and how it had stood out to me and um, I had been reading about the dance of dragons and I had been um, researching and, and about all the different Targaryen dragons over the past and um, the word morning stood out and so I started thinking about it and then it kind of just clicked and I was like wait a minute there was a little bit of discrepancy in the dragon morning and then it dawned on me or at least I think it dawned on me I, I'm hoping that I've got this but um, you can tell me what you think um, the morning dragon from the dance of dragons I believe is still alive same as I believe Rago is still alive and their fates kind of mirror each other because the death of mourning the dragon is kind of confusing there if you google it and um, or if you research it there's kind of um, a little bit of discrepancy some say that it was uh, that it's died so there was one I googled and it said that it was it had lived the dance of dragons that um, it had survived I should say um, it was a baby so it wasn't in the battle so um, it was too young so it had survived the dance of the dragons but then later there's another part where you google it and it's like oh no it's deceased and that it was recorded as um, the last dragon and 
oh, that kind of reminds me of that dream Danny was having, the last dragon, the last dragon, the last dragon. That could tie in too. So uh, see, these hints and clues, they just pop in at the most random times. <laughs> you just never know what's going to happen. But um, anyways, but yeah, like, so uh, the, the one where it said that morning had died, it had made a note in there saying that it was a little bit of confusion because that the last dragon was noted to be stunted and deformed. And that morning was never known to be stunted or deformed, that it was just a regular dragon, but that it was too small to be in the battle. So then it really, I thought, that's it. That's, that's, that's Rago's dragon. That's his dragon. And he is going to be coming, riding back into the story on his very own dragon. He's got to. It's got to. Uh, there's no way that I could think of something more cool or more exciting than the mastermind. There's no way. George R. R. Martin, I mean, he has dragons. I was thinking, oh, you know, Rago's, you know, it would be great. He could come in riding back into the story with a dragon almost the size of Drogo or Drogon. Sorry, Drogo. It's okay. I mean, I can't even keep my kids' names straight, so it's hard to keep all these Targaryen names. Um, but anyways, but yeah, I thought... This, you know, of course, I, you know, I'm thinking of a dragon that's almost the size of Drogon. And I think we're going to get the dragon morning. And I think it's going to be bigger than the size of Balerion. So he's going to be at least 160 years old. Um, and I, I mean, if Rago is about 10 or hopefully a little older. Um, but even if he's 10, um, that has been foreshadowed a bit also in the story, um, at least in the books. It, I don't know if they brought it up on the show at all, but um, there was a 10-year-old Targaryen. Um, I think his name was Aemond Targaryen. Aemond or Aemond, something like that. Sorry, I'm not really good with names. But um, anyways, it's it's Aemond, Aemond or Aemond. And um, he was 10 and he uh, ended up writing, was it, uh, oh gosh, Vagar? Vagar. I think it was Vagar. Like, yeah, Vagar, the dragon. A 170-year-old dragon. Um, Vagar. So a 10-year-old boy was able to take control of that dragon. And I think that's a little bit of foreshadowing for Rego. Um, because like I said, I think, you know, I think the dragon morning. So I think that Rego is the prince that was promised. And only the prince that was promised can bring the dawn. So that means, in my eyes, Rego is going to bring the dragon morning. And I think he's going to come in probably when things look the worst. I think it's going to look really bleak for mankind. I think, you know, I think we're going to get a really big wow moment. I mean, this is going to be something that's going to be holy, holy moly, uh, times two. Um, I think this is going to be a big, big, um, I, I, I screamed. I, I had to call my mom. I was like, mom, we're going to get dragons. And I was so excited. And, and I, I Googled or I not Googled. I, I, um, emailed a bunch of different other YouTube sites and, and told them what I thought was going to happen. And most of them were just like, yeah, cool. But I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> so, and that's fine. And it may not. It may not. And I'll be the one sitting there on the couch going, I can't believe it. And I'll probably write George another letter saying, I can't believe that I was so wrong. But um, I don't think I am. I really don't. I don't. But I guess everybody feels that way about their own theories. So, anyways, um, there was, um, gosh, I just, I got so excited about that. Um, Okay, so a couple other things about the morning dragon. Um, a couple things that I thought about was um, Quaith had um, said, well, actually, let me back it up. Let me back it up. Where in the world would this 160-year-old or older dragon be hiding? Where could it be? So I started like thinking back and everything and researching a bit and um, Come to find out, if you look on the map, there's um, a place called Mountains of the Morn, 
M-O-R-N, and morning and morn. And I was like, ooh, that's kind of cool, kind of coincidental. And, you know, I thought, hmm, I wonder if he could be over there. And then I started, there was something that I ended up reading about Quaith and come to find out, well, Quaith is located not too far from Ashai, but she's up further, which is closer to the Mountains of the Morn. And then it hit me with that statement that Quaith had said to Danny that um, in order to touch the light, you must pass beneath the shadow. And the word light, again, is synonymous for the word morning. And to pass beneath the shadow is, of course, they say like to travel to a shy or to, you know, you know, pass up through a shy, which leads you up to the mountains of the morn. So I thought, ooh, I thought that was pretty cool. You know, that, um, you know, I thought that was maybe a hint from Quaith to Danny um, and I think Danny asked her, like, you know, what will I find in a shy? And uh, Quaith had told her truth. And then I'm, the thing that I thought of was, well, what has Danny been lied to about? And that was Rago. She was lied to about Rago, um, uh, among other things, too, you know, about the, you know, Robert's Rebellion War. And I mean, she really wasn't lied to about that. So I think everybody was. But, um, but she was definitely, in my eyes, definitely lied to about the birth of Rego or the death of Rego. So I thought that would tie in a little bit in that. Um, and also, uh, I thought about the statement um, where they say waking dragons from stone. I thought that, again, like I said, these, these hints and these clues and these, these statements, they have so many different meanings that could be layered upon and and like I said there's so many people out there with wonderful theories that it's like yeah I can I could totally understand why that theory would, would work and uh waking dragons from stone I know that that I'd said previously that you know the three dragon eggs that were born from petrified they were petrified they were stone so yeah waking dragons from stone that works for that too but it could also possibly work for Rago and uh, morning, the dragon morning, and um, if he's in the mountains of the morn, which I would assume is kind of like Rocky Mountains, stone, you know, if he happens to travel there, I don't, uh, the part I don't know is like, how are they going to get Rego and morning together? I mean, I don't know. That part I don't know. I'm still just researching and trying to get pieces. There's probably a lot of it that I'm not going to be able to figure out until we get another book, which I'm waiting on pins and needles for, because as soon as it comes out, I'm going to be combing it for clues because I just love them. And um, so I'm really happy that season eight isn't coming out for a while because I love being able to think these things through and, and you know, find new clues and new theories and new ideas and um, hear other people's ideas. I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. I knew there was one last thing that I had to think of um, that I found that I thought it was interesting. Um, I think the original owner or writer for The Dragon Morning was uh, Reyna. Targaryen, I think it's R H A E N A. I'm not for sure. Reyna Targaryen, um, and she was also known as Reyna of Pentos. And there was a little bit of confusion in how many eggs she actually had. Um, some say there was that she had three eggs. Some say that she had four, um, and that they didn't know if morning had come from either the clutch of three that she'd had or out of the four. So um, when I was doing, like when I was kind of like trying to read how they had it phrased, I came up with that she actually had four eggs. Um, just by like the way it was worded, I was like, I count four. And if that's the case, morning would have been hatched from one and she would have had three remaining eggs. And after the Dance of Dragons, if I remember right, um, she had fled Westeros. And I'm, again, gosh, I'm trying to go off memory. So it's like, I could be completely wrong about this. It's horrible. But, um, or I could be confusing it with a totally different one. But anyways, but I know it was Reina of Pentos. And the fact that it's kind of interesting that Illyrio and uh, Berries and how um, they were from around Pentos area area and, um, and how Illyrio ended up with three eggs and I just thought that was really interesting and I thought it was kind of like a full circle possibly of you know where Illyrio may have come across those eggs um, so I thought that was interesting I'll probably google more about it because it just it's and again 
uh, there's the, what is it, Fire and Blood books that's going to be coming out this year. So um, I'll be looking through that too to see if I can find any more clues about the dragons and um, those eggs and everything. But I think that possibly could be where Danny ended up with those eggs. And could Reyna have had the dreams, the true dreams, where she can see the future a little bit, maybe a little bit of prophetic dreams? Um, and maybe she knew, like, I need to get these eggs over there that they're going to need this in the future. Um, and, you know, maybe, who knows? Well, I guess we'll never know until George spills the beans. So, and hopefully he won't leave us hanging. I'm hoping he does like a tell-all. That would be wonderful of what all of his little clues mean. Um, I think that'd be awesome. So, anyways, um, that is pretty much uh, all I can think of at this moment for the dragon. So yeah, I think we're going to get a really big, big, big dragon this season. Um, and you know, I, I can't wait. And there's some other thoughts that I've thought about, um, about like what could happen at the end, um, that I'll probably save for another video if I can, um, come up with enough information about it. And like I said, it's, it's always a work in progress. There's always stuff that just literally pops into my mind. It's like, oh my gosh, what if it's this? Or, oh, there's this hint. And, you know, it's just, it's crazy. Or somebody might say something in the comments and uh, I can research it and find out more information. I just, I love it. It's like a puzzle. It's like finding all these little puzzle pieces that fit together. So um, anyways, uh, if you liked the uh, theory, um, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Um, I do have another theory that ties in. I'm kind of working backwards. I started from the middle with Rego being alive. This is kind of the end because I thought it was like really exciting. And then I have a theory that ties maybe into the beginning of the story that also deals with Rego um, and the White Walkers and some symbols and all that. So I think I may have some clues on a little bit of that. So um, if you like it, um, watch for, for my next video and please leave any questions or comments below. I absolutely love talking to anybody that will listen. Um, anybody that has questions, I can, I can research it and uh, be more specific because I know sometimes I, I might not have all the facts because I'm trying to do this off the top of my head. And like I said, I've got four kids and they're awesome, but they keep me busy. So, um, and they drive me crazy. <laughs> and uh, so, like I said, if you have any questions, just please leave it in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye. This image was taken from the World of Ice and Fire book. How many dragons do you see? Take a good look, because at first I saw three, but now I see four. Look closely at the middle dragon. It can either be seen as one dragon with its mouth open, or you can see two dragons with their mouths closed. Even as you follow their necks down to the body, you can see two different necks. It's almost like an optical illusion. Lightbringer is another word synonymous with mourning. It's just another one of those clues that can have multiple meanings. I highlighted in pink what I believe may be a reference to the dragon mourning from the Dance with Dragons on page 180. The first one says, To the east, the first pale light of day. That is what we call mourning. The second part continues, The clouds in the sky were aglow, pink and purple, maroon and gold, pearl and saffron, one looked like a dragon. A dragon-shaped cloud seen in the morning. Very clever, George. This is the image of Jojen holding up his hand on fire while captive at Craster's Keep. At first I thought it was foreshadowing Jojen's death by the children of the forest fireball later on in that episode. And I know a lot of people still believe that. But that's not how he died. He died by the white attack and Mira slit his throat to end his suffering. Not to mention, the fireball thrown by the children of the forest looked nothing like his hand on fire. I believe he was seeing and talking to Bran about the real end, foreshadowing the fiery hand army 
coming for the final battle for dawn. I believe we may even have a bit of foreshadowing in the pre-release chapter of Victorian from the Winds of Winter. In that chapter, Victorian is talking about the horn that Euron claims to be Dragonbinder, how the horn must have come from a dragon bigger than Balerion. Not that I believe the horn came from mourning, I just believe it is foreshadowing a dragon bigger than Balerion, which I believe will be mourning. In Danny's House of the Undying Vision from the books, Rhaegar had said, There must be one more. The dragon has three heads. Again, this is one of those things that I believe refers to multiple things, one being a reference to mourning and Rago. It's like that old saying, you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. George has dragons in this story, and I can't imagine him not using them to their fullest extent. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for my next video. Remember, this is a new channel, so please like, share, and subscribe. Also, leave any questions or comments below. I would love to hear some feedback from everyone. Thanks and have a great day.